If you've been watching our videos, you might recognise that this isn't our garden. And that's because we bought a house. We even have a barn. A big drive. An underground cellar. Fruit tree. Another fruit tree. Random outbuildings. Another outbuilding. And another fruit tree. And a few more fruit trees. A lean-to. And a secret door. Comment down below if you can guess where we are and stick around for a full house tour. The garden needs a fair bit of work and as you can see some of the weeds are even taller than me. We've borrowed a bunch of tools that we have no idea how to use so we can clear the garden but you're not here for that, you're here for the house tour coming up next. So this bit up here is our barn, we've got our what will be our driveway um, and then a door just for us as well and this is the house kind of from the street view I suppose. So let's go and have a look. As we go in we've got our really gorgeous stone barn which in some places it looks absolutely amazing and in other places it doesn't look like it's going to be standing for much longer. So we need to have a proper look at the structure and see how much of it we can potentially keep because we obviously want to keep as much of this original barn as possible because the stonework is absolutely beautiful. Um, but if we look inside we can see we've got loads of space. So this is Danny's pièce de résistance for all his tools and junk that he's been storing under our pergola at home. Look how much storage space he's got now. When we're looking up at the roof, most of the wood, wooden beams look re in really good condition and really intact, um, but some of them not so much. Um, so we're wondering whether to bring this barn down to one level, because at the moment it's, you could almost say it's two story, but we're potentially thinking Half warehouse, half gym. I think that's a good idea. This is a small part of our garden. I say small because it carries on all the way there. And that's one of the reasons why we purchased this house, because it happens to be south facing and it feels very secluded. On my left hand side, we have the barn. Behind me, we have our neighbors, which happen to be my mum. And on the right hand side, we have another derelict house. That's nobody's lived there for a while. And just behind Joanna, it's our house. So this, this very secluded sun trap. Just by the fence over there, you see another outbuilding, which it is falling apart. We are potentially thinking of restoring and turning into a guest house or workshop, summer kitchen maybe, pizza oven, barbecue area. We also have various fruit trees. We have a cherry tree that I identified. I identified a pear tree and what I think it's a peach tree, but I'm not sure about it. So if you follow me, we're going to show you the first two rooms. The house itself is a bit of a weird layout, so we're going to try and put a floor plan on the screen for you. So we have a couple of steps and this glazed lean-to or balcony. I don't know which one it is. So the old owners left their furnishings still. If you look behind the door, we have a nice fur coat, hand back. I might wear that hat in the summer. A hat, which... It looks pretty new. Coming through here, we have a single bed. Next to the bed, we have a chair that's acting like a bedside table, I guess. We have a phone. Hello, yeah. Yeah, you forgot your wardrobe. Yeah, your clothes are still in it. Yeah. Yeah. Tomorrow. Perfect. I wasn't joking when I said the clothes are still here. The old owners left everything. We have an old TV. I wonder if it works, actually. We also found their mags. Through here, we have another big room, which is like a, maybe what in the UK would be a big double bedroom. I hope nobody asked the questions about the big box on the back of the TV. Judging by our YouTube analytics, most of our viewers would be old enough to remember what the big box is. Coming from those steps, from those two rooms, we go into a, like a second set of steps. This floor's a little bit spongy. I'm a bit dubious about walking on it. There is a cute dresser, but I have a feeling we're not gonna renovate it. There's lots of cute little knickknacks on here though. And Danny seems to think these little cups are for Rakia. I think they're really cute. And going into this next room, again, another, you know, spacious-ish bedroom. There's like a little cot there. I think this is an old fridge or some freezer, freezer. So I found this really cute little old, big old radio actually. Nothing was little when it was old. 
And there's also a chess board with the pieces still inside. So we can do that in the evenings when we get bored. So that's it for this room. Old owners did leave a few of their old gardening tools. The electrical tools are all the ones we've borrowed. Um, but they did leave a lot of the old ones from, I suppose, when they used to garden. We've got old pitchforks, old spades. And let's go to the next set of rooms. So like Danny said, a bit of a weird layout. It's all in kind of bits and bobs. We have three separate entrances for three separate sets of rooms. But we think that this wasn't part of the original building. We think that was an addition. I believe this is where the old owners live once they struggle with mobility. They kind of moved into one room. So this was their bed because through that door there's a loo. If you're squeamish, I suggest fast forward a few seconds, where this is an old loo. And, yep, complete wreck. We have some more space behind. So we think eventually this could turn into a nice bedroom ensuite with a half, Half of this space here can be a bathroom and the other can be like a walk-in wardrobe or something else. There is one thing about this room, through these doors, let's see how many of you can guess what's this. It's not just a, a lock fire because that's the lock fire here. We were told uh, this is a wood-fired oven in which you can fit a whole lamp and it can be slow roasted overnight. The house also comes with basement and that's why maybe the floor in this room here felt a bit spongy. Just at the other side of the barn. We have a couple of rooms here. What I believe this was used as a chicken coop. And there's another one on the other side actually, over, just over there, which if we go around and I'll show you. It's kind of hard to get to because everything is just so overgrown. There's car tires everywhere. There's a lot of rubbish, which we can tidy up. It's just gonna take us a while. So going in here. It's another kind of room where they're pretty sure they kept some sort of animals and a secret door. I know what you're thinking. That's just going back to the barn. But I dare you to go back in the video and find the door in the barn. There isn't one. We've only flown here for a few days just so we can purchase the house. And we didn't really plan on doing much work, but we thought whilst we've got time and the weather's nice, we'll do a bit in the garden and it might help us be able to make a plan for all our vegetables. We've got this structure, which we don't really know what it is, but we've started gathering all the, the rubbish and trash that's been in the garden. Um, so that's where we're keeping it at the moment. But I'm probably quite a nice little dipping pool for in the summer. Um, we've got a lovely big garden here. And as Danny said earlier, it's um, south facing. So we get sun all day. And if we're looking at the size of it, it's about a thousand square meters or quarter of an acre. So considering the fact that we want to be, you know, as self-sufficient and sustainable as possible, we think this is plenty of space for us to be kind of growing our own food, but also the space is not too overwhelming. Um, we don't have a really robust plan yet, but we're thinking polytunnel along the back and lots of raised beds dotted around, helped along by the fact that if we take some of the stone away from the barn, then we've got lots of free stone to build our raised beds. Cause you know, we like a freebie. When Danny sees some tools, he simply can't resist doing a bit of work to get started early. Yeah, I've uh, done a little bit of streaming. I had a go at that. Probably going to see a clip of it, but I got bored of that. So now I start doing... Uh, I don't even know what I'm doing. I'm using this tool, taking off all the weeds. I mean, I've barely scratched the surface. 
but the idea is to potentially cover this area here with some black plastic to suppress the weeds. So hopefully, next time when we visit the property, there will be a small area where we're going to have no weeds. Good morning from our new house. As we said yesterday, we're here just for a few days and we weren't intending to do if any work. We just came here to purely purchase the house. But you saw us yesterday just kind of start digging this place up. Garden is completely overgrown. So we're gonna try a small patch and see if we, it works. We purchased 40 square meters of heavy duty plastic, which is the exact size of our current garden back in the UK. So we're just gonna put down the grass and see how it compares. It's going to put things in perspective, our current UK garden versus the garden that we just purchased. Our UK garden will be about the width of where my finger is here, but it's the same length as that. And just to put it in perspective, this is how much bigger the garden here is. And I'm not going to walk over there just because it's so overgrown at the moment, but our garden ends just over there where those two roof meet. So this is my mum's barn, this is our neighbour's barn. I say our neighbours, but it's actually an abandoned building that nobody lives in. Whilst we've got a bit of extra time, we thought we'd tackle another area of the garden. This bit is kind of divided off by the path um, in front of the main bedroom. And as you can see, it's an absolute jungle. So we are going to do a bit of trimming, a bit of cutting and fighting with some concrete posts which are in the ground. The only thing we're going to leave is this tree, which I'm not sure what it is. It could be like a queen's tree, and this looks like a pear tree. I spot a piece of roofing, which I believe is asbestos. So we're going to be careful going around it, and we're just not going to disturb it for now until we're certain what it is and what we're doing with it. Also, looking around the area that we're about to start cleaning, we have this tree here which I believe is a hazelnut tree. We both love ha hazelnuts and uh, they're quite expensive to buy. So if we have them on our land and we can get them for free, that's good news. We do have electricity at the property. It looks like another DIY job. We have an outlet just out here on the outside of the house. Let's see if that works. Let's just see if it works yeah, before we true. entangle. to be working. So that's about an hour's worth of work. We're kind of making a good progress, but we're getting hungry, so the morale is going down. Um, however, we did find a fig tree here in the back. So that's kind of good, and there's lots of new growth, so I'm guessing it's we're going to be picking some nice figs out of this tree. And unfortunately, we were told that this vine here, it's a grapevine, but we were told it's dead. So we start removing all the structure for it. And we're going to go and grab lunch after that. So we catch you soon. One sec, try and break that so it's not in your way. Mm. Easy. It's. <laughs> <laughs> Ta -da! We've done what doesn't look like a lot, but we feel like is a lot. It's been pretty much a whole day's work, minus this siesta we had in the middle of the day, because it's getting quite warm. It looks like a completely different day to this morning. I was wearing my ski jacket, and now I mean, I'm getting a tan. Um, so we went to another DIY store in the opposite direction of our village today and we found some more of that plastic stuff. It was half the price so we couldn't resist so we bought some more. I think we're going to call it a night now. We're both getting pretty hungry. We've covered 
This whole area and the area you saw earlier, we've lifted more than our body weight in tiles and we've covered about the square footage of two of our gardens, which puts into perspective that we've got a fair bit more to do. But I'm pretty pleased with our progress. We've done really well today. Um, and we've got a massive pile of weeds and sticks, which we're probably going to either compost or burn. We're not sure whether these weeds can be composted, so we'll see. If you've been watching our videos, you might see that we've only uploaded probably a few gardening videos as kind of beginner gardeners. But I suppose we've been doing it for a couple of years and it was mainly just to give it a go really, just to see if we enjoyed it. So we really like the thought of growing our own food and knowing exactly where it comes from and things escalated quickly. Um, so we do really enjoy it. As and... they normally do with us. <laughs> yeah. um, so the idea of being a bit more self-sufficient was really appealing to us. And I suppose buying a property elsewhere with a huge amount of space. Well, you could do it in the UK, but you need a lot of money. So yeah, that idea was really appealing to us and that kind of lifestyle of building a homestead. Yeah, we thought we liked it, so we'll keep going. Yeah, I mean, we have the space to do everything we want to do. We want to take control of our food produce. We want to produce as much as possible of the food that we consume. We're thinking of collecting all the rainwater from the roof into like a large 10,000 10, litre tank. We, we can put a soil on the roof, as, on the house, on, uh, as well as the barn roof. We also have a well actually, which we didn't show you. We have our own water supply. We could also have chickens in here. The space that we have here allows it. And a lot of vegetables. And a lot of vegetables. And we can basically. kill half of them. And even if only half survive, we've still got a load of vegetables. Yeah, we do, <laughs> yeah, we do have a lot of vegetables. We can potentially have, like we said, we want to do a pizza oven, outside seating area with grill and entertainment area. A big warehouse gym. A, a big warehouse gym, half gym, half workspace. And we already have this. I'm going to start filling in with rubbish for now. You can always fill it in with cold water so it's nice and refreshing in the summer, like a little paddling pool. The summer here gets like 40, 45 degrees. And think how much Ada's going to love all this. Ada's garden's just had an Upgrade. Upgrade. The house comes with a basement, which is down there. Dun, dun, dun. Uh, I would let Joanna go in first because she's brave like that. So we have some. Oh my god! <laughs> <laughs> it sticks in here like rat. Mm -mm. <laughs> okay. Yeah, I'm done. <laughs> Do you want some more gherkins or pickles? <sighs> oh, what the hell is that? Or <laughs> if somebody could tell me that what that is, I think it's a meat. Anyway, go. So that's our basement. <coughs> <coughs> Jesus Christ! <coughs> I think something might have died in there. <laughs> Yay, new house! <sighs> yeah, we're very excited for the new house. 